Welcome to the lost art of the Ashishin uh, workshop. I'm going to try to show you uh, more in detail exactly how I use water and how it's all related to my experience with uh, dry sieving. The big difference between dry sieving and uh, ice water sieving, as long as the, the actual sieving goes, when you dry sieve, you agitate at the same time that you sieve. That means that you're using your material and the perforation to separate the, the particle at the same time that you're doing your agitation. Here it's a little different. Here you have agitation and then you have sieving, which is really nice because it gives you a lot more uh, freedom in, uh, in both sides of the, of the process and water rehydrates your, uh, your, your trim. That means that your trim are playable. That means that you can really agitate it in water. As long as there is not anything that is actually crushing the leaves, the current of the water is really stroking off the resin head from, uh, from the stock. What's really amazing with uh, the water, it's this machine is that vortex of water. When you have loose trim inside, the trim are sucked down, sucked to the middle. They are spinning up slowly, slowly, slowly in a wider circle, and then thrown against the, the wall of the of the machine, sucked down at the bottom, and again up and down. That means that. When you have free floating matter in the water, every part of the trim is struck by the current of the water and all the, the resin head are falling. The only thing that would damage the process is the ice. And when you do ice water, you have four elements into your, um, your process. You have the amount of trim, the amount of ice, the amount of water, and the timing. So the best way to start is, you want to start with little trim and much water. By that, you help the process of agitation. You, the least trim, the more water, the more chance for the water to really take off those resin head and keep them into, uh, into the mass of the, of the water. The more trim you have, the more difficult it is to pick up all the, all the resin head. The definition of the word sieve, it's sieve is an instrument made of perforation that help you separate uh, different uh, elements from uh, chaff, uh, rice, so the most certain, most uh, surely the size of it. And when you do that, it implies that you need your sieve to be very clean, otherwise the process does not happen. And when you have a mass of material that you want to, uh, to separate, the more there is, the more difficult it is to actually do the process of sieving. So it implies that you have to work with little material on a wide surface. Then your sieving is actually working every time. The uh, resin head falls from the leaf. The, the resin head falls directly on the material and has a chance to go through the, through the perforation of the, of the material. And anything that is of a bigger size, it's going to stay over it. Inside the, in, with the water and, uh, and the sieve like this, here you really have only agitation, and here you have separation, like the actual 
sieving process. I separate my bag into different buckets so that the weight of the water with the resin head inside it already makes a, a first sieving by itself, like gravity is helping me to separate what was in, a, in the machine, as you will see. I'm going to take a tiny break and bring the trim. So, I want to rehumidify my, um, my trim. And because I don't use a, a bag inside, I make an ice sandwich. So I'm going to put a tiny bit of ice at the bottom. I'm going to put my trim. I usually don't use any uh, instrument uh, to measure, which is not really good, but at the same time, it's really nice to, uh, to build up your experience, experience without relying on a uh, on tool. And also, the weight, it's like it's... When you have really fine, fine uh, sugar trim, the mass of it that you see, it's the mass that it is. When you have loose bud, a little bud like this, looseness into it, it's like you can, you can have a, a higher percentage of the space because it's not a real space, it's a, it's a looseness of it. But you have to always think that if you think it's too much, it's really too much. And uh, instead of thinking to put more, you should actually take some off. So this is a pretty good average. I, I could put more, but um, I'm going to play it so that you really see perfect quality. Next time I, uh, we do another, the next one, I will show you making a mix mistake and how to take care of the mistake and uh, making it better. So the ice on top is keeping the, all the trim under water. I want the trim to really rehumidify at the same time. Those trim are uh, frozen and quite fresh. 2015 OG, uh, Jesus OG from TGA. So I do not have to rehumidify for long. Water is a tool that is really helpful, but still, the, you have to, uh, to use it in a way that you're sure that you don't affect the resin and you don't lose anything. And my eyes really keep everything under it. The only problem with that my first wash, I have too much ice. I have like a, a high potential of grinding the leaf material and make particles that I would have a hard time to deal after when I save. So because of that, usually my first wash, it's super short.
Okay, I'm going to leave this for a minute. And I'm going to explain you why I don't use a bag. If you put a bag in a, in a machine, that vortex of water, instead of separating all the trim, it's bulging it at the bottom of the bag, and the, the bag is twisted. So there is like, the bag is moving, but there is a bundle of trim. There is not, there is not the space for the trim inside that bag, inside the water of the machine, to actually do that first sieving. And there is a sieving happening, but it's like you are most certainly not able to, uh, to take everything if the, uh, the trim were floating free. And um, that bundling, the, it, it's like you, uh, you go opposite the, the potential of that, what that vortex is, uh, is giving you. This is the best thing I have ever seen. As long as movement, it's like a, a current that continually just truck really super gently the, the resin head uh, away. And you don't want anything to, uh, to block that, that agitation. If you put that in a bag, uh, it works, but it doesn't work the same. The only really advantage of putting your trim in a bag, you protect your trim from the ice. That means that you can go for higher, uh, higher timing, uh, you, can, you don't have to worry that much about the quantity of ice that you put in the water. Uh, it's like it's, uh, it makes it really easy, but uh, I'm pretty sure you don't get uh, everything. So now I'm going to let them uh, start because I don't need to really uh, rehumidify this one for too long. When they're really dry, uh, sativa or indica, sativa because they, they become so brittle, they're so fine, you want to be sure and you give them a long, a long bath, like 10-15 minutes. And for an indica it's basically the same because the leaves are so thick, you want to be sure that water infiltrate the full leaves. Worst case scenario, you just put your hand under the ice and see if the, the leaf material is, uh, is breakable. If it's nice and supple, you're good. So now everything is about the sound. This is a sound that it's not really that grinding sound. But there is quite a lot of ice. So normally, that's it, that's my first wash. Your water really show you everything about what you just did. The color of the water is very dependent on the, on the strain. It's like different chlorophyll, different color. It can go from uh, fluo green to uh, dark purple, burgundy, almost black. It's um, the clearliness of the water. You don't want any muddiness inside. If, if it gets like that khaki green with a lot of uh, plant matter that gives that muddiness to it, and a lot of green matter in your bag that is like destroyed leaf matter or not, leaf matter that is still intact, as I will show you. Uh, you put too much ice, not enough water, too much stream, uh, uh, too much, uh, uh, too longer uh, cycle time, something was wrong. So, you make that mistake one time, but it doesn't mean that your whole load is done. You can still save it in a bag. You made a mistake in the agitation. Now, because sieving is another process and you have different levels to it, that was the first one. The weight of the water falling with a tricon through the bag, when you separate the bag, everything goes through and the pressure of the water makes that first sieving happen.
because my bag has separated, they are super easy to, uh, to deal with. And, and I work with different entity in my, uh, like level in my CV. So the first one, you just want to make sure that there is nothing that left with the, the little green. Uh, you see the leaves here, they are still in a super good shape. They've not been broken. But inside, there is even a little seed here. Jésus Soji, maybe we could to put on the side. Because I, my, uh, my leaves are loose here, my exhaust pipe is totally uh, open. I don't, uh, if I had a filtering uh, system here, it would block the, the whole water flowing and uh, making me that, uh, my, sieve, my sieving. So this I can, I don't really care. It's been washed, there is most certainly nothing to it. Now this bag, if I put it somewhere where it's dirty, when I put it back on top of a, a bag where I collect my resin, everything that is under is going to go here. So you really want to work in a super clean condition, and when you put it, you put it on something, you know it's clean. My second gone bag, The 160, there is a little bit, the 160 show you the quality of the, um, of the grower. Uh, if he really, if he waited for the plant to be totally ripe, you will have a lot in your 160 and very little in your 25. If you have a lot in your 25, it means that the resin, the plant wasn't really pushed to uh, to full flower, uh, flower time because you have a lot of immature uh, size uh, resin. So, this one I just give it and for me this is not really just pushing the material in the middle so it's convenient to, to spoon it. This for me, it's action uh, sieving. I use the pressure of the water to separate the grain and I brush it in a, in a bag. You're going to see on a bigger size. So this time, because I took no risk, there is no way I can really hurt my trim. There is very little trim. I had a lot of water. I was not too bad on ice, but like on a, on a border limit side. So I cut down really to the, to the minimum, the, the amount of, uh, of time. I'm working in, in, in the best condition and today I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you just the best condition so that the, the water rinsing is not really something I, uh, I need to use because just the gravity of the water did most of the job. So now that I can dry my, uh, my resin into, uh, with a machine, my life is not as complicated. And I just put all my wash into the pile and I make a patty at the end that I put in the fridge until I have enough patty to put in my machine.
I never separate my wash. You're gonna see my wash are getting cleaner and cleaner uh, at every time. If your wash are not cleaner than the time before, uh, it's because you uh, you were not perfect into your uh, your ratio uh, trim water. Uh, So, you see how sticky it is in that bag? Where I, act, I, I, I hardly touch it. Imagine how sticky it would be in that 220 bag that normally hold all that. And that bag, you cannot wash it every time as I'm gonna do this one. So if you look at it, this is like plugged, seriously plugged. When, when the resin is not really sticky, you can stretch it back into your container and the pressure of the water is gonna take the, the resin of the, the thread, the hole of the, of the bag. When it's sticky, you have to clean it with, uh, with alcohol every time. Otherwise, if those all are, uh, are not clean, you're not, you don't have a sieve in your hand anymore. You just have a, a piece of material with, uh, and you could use any at that level. It's like, it's a tool that needs to be absolutely clean for the principle of sieving to uh, to happen. Oh, no, let's sit here because the water is so clear. You always try to avoid leaving the bag with uh, with the resin you collect open. But if there is something flying around, it's gonna finish there, for sure. Yeah. Now, the over the ice that I considered uh, a handicap, this time when I fill up my machine, it's gonna melt. So that when I run, I'm going to have very little ice in the water. And I'm going to judge the, the temperature by uh, listening to the machine. As soon as I don't hear any ice cube uh, floating, hitting the side of the wall, I add a little uh, handful to be sure that the, the water stay uh, at the level I want. If, there is, if I can hear ice cube floating, 
the water is ice cold. It's quite nice to do it outside like that, I have to say. This little machine, you really can take them basically uh, anywhere. The, the process of collecting can be done anywhere. It's when you go into the drying process that you really need uh, a dedicated room and uh, really uh, a controlled uh, environment. Otherwise, you don't dry and this is the most difficult to do and the most important. I'm not afraid to give you more time. Already, already it has a, a more of a, a rim like when you agitate ice cube in a, in a glass, there is less of a grinding uh, sound. I feel so safe. My uh, my ratio, thin water, ice, and, uh, and timing is uh, is on a really super safe side. side. So, so my second uh, my second wash is longer than I would have done. But still, it's uh, it was uh, something along for me. I, I don't even really know the timing because I. Uh, I just use the angle, the machine is always too, uh, too high for me to actually see the, the number. So you see, it because I worked a little bit more, there is more cloudiness in the, in the water. But that's the, that's the try, but it's still super clear, super clean. And that's the way the water has to be. Your water has actually to be clearer and clearer, wash after wash. And your resin also, is getting clearer and clearer because actually it's like a, imagine a fruit tree uh, you shake the tree just a little bit you have the ripest fruit falling then you shake a little bit more you have the second ripest and so on and so on that's a little bit like it it's like the more power the more time you uh, you give to shake the the other lower the rightness come down and so on and so on. Those tricons are made to fall by nature when they are when they arrive. So you don't need that much. And the water is still a lot of power, but it's a, a gentle power. A power that don't break the leaf material. And that's all you need when you see to be able to separate without breaking the leaf. When you do that dry sieve, every time and every time you take back your trim to, to see them again, it's really another grade because there is more action. The first time, you just put a little and you just make them jump over your, your stretch material. The second time, you touch them a little bit more. The third time, you start breaking up. The fourth time, you gently caress. And it's more pressure, it's more debris that are going to mix up. And it's in this uh, country, it's one, uh, one full spectrum. We, they don't separate. That's why I, I do 45 to 160. It's like I, I want the full spectrum. I want really what the plant is, uh, is giving me. I just want just a slice of it, or many slices of it. I'm going, to fill it up, I'm going to fill up the machine before I start collecting. That's usually what I uh, do when I work. <coughs> like this in game time. Especially when you have short bus. By the time the machine is finished, my bag are be back ready to, uh, to work again. So you see now, it looks like I had a lot of uh, a trim, but because it was 
a bunch of loose stream, they made the mass that is not a real mass, there is much less to it. That's why I was telling you I was playing super sad. I could have put twice as much and I would still be in a, in a good way. But I want to show you how it works without really involving deep, uh, deep action, water uh, separation in your, in, in your uh, seal. I'll show you that next time, where you have to uh, Usually it's a little bit too much cream and a little bit too much ice at the beginning. The good news is, uh, because it's a one-time action, the time after, uh, you can compensate for that. If it's really too much cream, you can take a, a handful or, a, or two and put it back the next round. Usually you have to dance around using as little ice as possible. So basically, it's really always a good move to sink small quantity and to make more machine for it. It's more work, but uh, it can be less also because it goes faster. And sometimes you cannot separate really well that wash. It doesn't matter how much you, uh, you wash it. And basically, the water technique I use to, uh, to brush the resin, it's, uh, it's a little bit like the carding from, uh, from bubble man. But instead of using a cart, I use the pressure of the water with a, a fan uh, sprayer. And it works like a dream. So I'm going to go this time, I'm going to go six minutes. And let's see what I have in the bag. Because I, I do really super short run, uh, basically 
And if you pour ice cold water, five minutes, six minutes of spinning, your water is going to still be quite cold. And, uh, and then you would take away the only thing that is truly uh, a handicap to quality as long as cleanliness goes. It's the ice crushing the, the, the material of the ash. The ice doesn't stroke the, um, the, tri the tricon head from the stove. It's really the, the water that, uh, that does that. <coughs> okay, let's see what we have. Uh, You will see also the grain of your resin in that 116 is a lot bigger than in your, uh, in your 45. And in that resin in your 160 is good, the resin, the resin in your 45 to, uh, to 160 is incredible. So now, when you have a little water that left in, in your bag with the resin, if you take it and you spin it, the weight of the water at the bottom and on the side of the wall is already also uh, a sieving. And then you can spread, you spread your resin so that you can really wash it easier here. And then, with that water, you do a third sealing. And that's really a super big advantage compared to... Uh, I'm pretty sure you can see the, the foam here. When you have the foam that nice and white like this, your resin is clean. I really have basically nothing to do as a secondary seed cleaning. I'm not sure the proper term for that because my agitation was uh, really on the super safe side. So this time, because the resin is a little sticky, I make sure that everything collects really at the bottom of the bag, so that there is as little as possible to uh, to scrap from the surface of the of the seed. It's like I don't lose it because it goes into my uh, my alcohol, and that alcohol. I like uh, all I of it, but uh, I like it better uh, as an ash than as an oil. So I'm trying to uh, to cut the loss of pure resin as uh, as much as I can. It's nice to have like uh, one of those different uh, settings. <laughs> It's because it's nice and warm here. So if I was, if I had the drying room, I would squeeze a lot out of it now. Then I would put it between towel 
and squeeze even more humidity uh, in my towel, then bring it to my uh, pillex and I will chop it straight up in my pillex before going in my dry room and spreading the resin on my rack, on my, uh, on my paper. And this is a lot of work in between, uh, in between run. Now I just have to, uh, to put it down on top of the, of the first one. And I keep a lot more humidity into it because I want to be able to make a, a nice patty at the, at the end. So if you look at the color of this resin, and this resin, there is really a big difference. And you see now gentle I was with the, with the first one, still the difference of color is the rightness of the, of the resin. Those I hardly run the machine and I have a little, but that's the ultra ripe. That means that there is, they are into the darker amber shade. This is the second level. And when it's sticky like this, it's really a good news. It's a pain, it's hard to work with, but it's such good news that you have to smile. You can see the difference of, of shade here. Yeah. And even in that one that I just pulled, there is a darker shade here than the other. You really have a different grade of uh, of ripeness coming in because there is such a wide, uh, a wide spectrum that is taken together. When you have the smell, the taste of the mm -hmm. mask when you, uh, you eat it, it's like you're pretty sure that you're looking well with that hand. And also the taste of the water. It's always nice to taste it. And you see still how clean it is always. It's like if it get muddy and dirty, something wrong at that time. And you have to walk around it. That means you're going to have to do a lot of work to do with your sleeping bag, to bring it separate. For the moment, it's like I have basically nothing to do with And I don't think I could really, even if I wanted, with such a, a ratio, I could really make it uh, dirty so that you can see it. I don't have to make another one where I can really show you 
what it means that when you're pushing and the you can follow the water. The, the biggest need when you're a beginner is to be able to know when you make a mistake. Because when you make a mistake here, the next, the next step, you can walk along that mistake and, uh, and make it good again. So, as soon as you have this, you can really build up your experience on it because you, you know, even if you don't know what you're doing, you know if you have made a mistake and that's all you need to be able to, uh, to really learn after it's, uh, it's experience and you can build that experience right over that. If you have a shoe fly uh, over the, the machine, you can really see how in the perfect condition you stream out compared to the, the one untouched like this. It's like this is uh, gentleness personified. Uh, The number of wash really depends on the, on the strain, on the quantity you put in, and uh, on, the, on your timing. And uh, some, the sativa in general are more demanding. You really have to work them seriously to, uh, to get the resin to fall. The more indica type, c'est just shed it really, really easy, like, uh, without much effort. And sometimes you have some, uh, some strain where the first wash, the second wash, the third wash is like the fourth wash. There is really so little, you wonder if it's really something bad. And then you do it one more time just because you want to make sure and then I start to really unload totally the, the amount and the six and the seven. So it's like you never really know until you reach a certain amount of wash. And an average is over five, six, seven, sometimes ten, twelve. It's like, but every, it doesn't matter how many wash, the quality is going to be good. So it's really worse. The extra, the extra effort, even, even a few grams, let's say a last, a last wash, two grams, if you think that 10% it's 40 grams, two grams it's half a percent. Half a percent when you produce, it's a lot per machine. And uh, per day and, and per month. So it's like it's really worth that little extra effort. And it shows respect, especially when you have good resin. It really shows respect to, uh, to the person that's been growing that plant for six months who didn't cut any shortcut to be able for you to have high quality. Like there is no way you're going to shortcut on the 10 minute wash when you have something like this. It's not fair. You have to change business if you're, if you're thinking like this, something is wrong. <laughs> so, let's put a little bit more. We need to be able to show our 
mindful we are, uh, we are about the planet and recycling everything and making as little footprint on the, on the ecosystem as, uh, as possible that we really actually have. So even, even that green, that green is like uh, some, uh, some serious good stuff for the, for the planet. It's worth composting, it's worth going that extra step, finding a garden wherever you are that would take care of something like this. Most of the, of the city, especially here in California, they all have city garden or people who are looking for stuff like that. It's just a few big, big, big. No? This time I'm going to push nine. I hardly push that machine over that amount. And because I put so little this time, and there is so little ice, I'm going to push it up to the maximum uh, for me the short time ever. So again, there is very, very little material in my, uh, in my catch bag. Bag is clean. There is no to clean in the other. And when you clean this bag, you don't want to clean it over the other one because everything that you're taking away and separating from this bag, you would put it in this bag and then you have to do it again. But at the same time, because that one is 160, I'm pushing more than uh, leaf material smaller than 160 when I, uh, when I do that. That means there is resin inside that. So how you reuse that water in the machine, because it's especially when it's clean like that, or you have your 25 bags on the side and all the water is passed through the 25 bags. And you don't really use the 25 bag with your other three because it takes too long to, uh, to flow. It really slows down the process a lot. And it's not the same quality. It's like I like it totally separate. And uh, you do the same heavy duty washing on it every time. And you can be really brutal with it. Because anything that goes through the perforation, it's, if it's crazy, it's so small, you're not interested. So you can really like brush like crazy and clean to, the, to a level that uh, is really good for edible and sometimes even like melted. And again, here there's nothing to clean. My water is super, uh, super white. But already, I'm, uh, the quantity of, uh, of resin is lower. You see, every time you touch something, you're going to put it on your back. So you can walk outside, but um, it's not the best condition. Like a nice room where you are. You sure there is no, uh, no cat air, nothing floating in the air, where you, where, where you need to work in the most perfect cleaning condition. Because anything that is flying anywhere around is going to finish here. Doesn't matter what. So again, I push everything in the middle of the bag.
So, this is the third watch and already it's really small compared to the, to the second one. It doesn't really mean that it's finished. This one is going to take me a lot. But because I have so little, and I know basically how much resin potential there is on that much quantity, uh, after this one, I'm going to really put the maximum time just to show that there's going to be very little that's going to come out of it. And this one is really nice. Even lighter than the water pressure one. Because I shake a little bit harder and the lower brightness came down. Really, like you can see the transparency, so there is nothing in, uh, 